What's up everybody, Coach Mills here, welcome to a brand new Valorant video, and in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down why you still suck at aiming. Now, aiming, <laughs> basically nine times out of 10, you are stuck in your rank because of your aim. And there are so many things that you're doing incorrectly that will just prevent you from not only ever climbing, but ever improving, period. So we have to fix this, or you're just gonna be stuck in your rank forever. But go to the Gameplay website, and the link's down below for in-depth events, guides, map guides, agent courses, I mean, we got it on the Gameplay website, so do yourself a favor, go check it out, and the link's right below, but without further ado, let's jump into the video. Now, everyone knows just how important it is to have good aim in Valorant. I mean, that's pretty obvious. It's a very aim-centric game, and if you don't have good aim, you're just not going to be able to perform, get those kills, and carry your team. But you don't really understand quite how important it is for your aim to be at a certain level. You see, every single thing in Valorant is actually predicated on your aim. Specifically, in most games, there are three pillars. Mechanics, game sense, and positioning. And they all work in perfect mofo mode to come together and create you, as a player, how good you are in any given game. But in Valorant in particular, your mechanical skill is more important by far than the other two, and I'm going to tell you why. It is almost impossible to learn the proper way to position and proper game sense oriented decision making if your aim is subpar or unable to convert on good game sense and good positioning. Basically as a TLDR, it's very difficult to learn when a decision was good or bad when you lost because you can't aim, not because it was a bad decision. Now you can imagine how this has really rampant effects across you improving as a player because if your aim just isn't up to the certain amount of skill necessary to convert on a lot of the good decisions you're making, you're never knowing what decision was good and what decision was bad. And because of that, you're never gonna be able to slowly improve yourself as a player in those regards and you're just going to be sitting in this abyss where you're thinking, oh man, I made a really bad decision, but no, you made a good decision, you just couldn't follow through because your mechanics were so goddamn bad. Now, before we get into the things that you could do about your aim to get them up to the level they need to be, something that you need to understand, and this is a hard truth, but aim alone can get you to platinum above. And I'm not even talking about top tier aim, like 10's god level aim. Honestly, with aim like 10's, you can get to radiant just with your aim alone. But just having good, consistent aim that is built on gunplay fundamentals can automatically get you to a pretty high level in Valorant, and then you can improve on top of that with game sense and position. So let's break down now the biggest mistakes that players are doing with their aim and what you can do about it to fix it as quickly as possible. We don't want to make you spend tens of thousands of hours in Kovac Aim Trainer to get the aim you need. And honestly, you don't. So that's good news for you. So let's jump into the list. So I'm not going to say any names, but you know who you are. You're actually just using shift or crouch to control your aim, and you're not actually counter strafing. I know this is not possibly you. It couldn't possibly be you. But if it is, I need to talk to you why counter strafing is so important. And you're doing yourself a huge disservice if you never put time and effort into making sure you're doing this 100% correctly. So basically what I want you to do is to go up a wall in training and I want you to run to the right and when you tap the alternate key to shift your momentum for that counter strafe, I want you to take a shot. No shift, no crouch, don't even put your finger on those buttons. And then I want you to run to the left and counter strafe and tap a shot as well. Now I want you to keep doing this over and over again. First from a further distance, then from a closer distance and your dots should always be lining up. Essentially, you should have two clusters, one on the right and one on the left, where the shots are perfectly accurate or almost perfectly accurate right on top of each other. Now, honestly, you're probably going to see a lot of stray bullets way the fuck over in Narnia, and that is what's happening in game. When you are not counter strafing correctly, your first shot accuracy is out the window, and even if your crosshair placement is good and you're actually aiming quote unquote well, the bullet is not going to go where you want it to go. Now, a big problem though is holding shift is comparable to counter strafing. It does make your weapon accuracy a lot better than if you didn't press shift, but when compared to counter strafing, which is almost first shot accurate, the consistency is unacceptable when that could mean the difference between you missing that initial headshot and the enemy hitting there. So this is a crutch that can get you through some 
some gunfights, but eventually it's no longer going to work anymore and you're never going to learn the proper way to counter strafe. Now, another thing that counter strafing really lets you do that's amazing is you get to jiggle peek angles and fire perfectly accurate without stopping hardly at all, which could be amazing if you know where an enemy is. You could easily jiggle peek an angle, take a shot with that first shot accuracy as you're re jiggling back behind cover and you can see pro players or players on stream do this all the time and another thing it allows you to do is keep maximum mobility and maximum accuracy combined which makes you a harder target to hit more flexible in the middle of a gunfight and you just get to be more accurate so it's benefits on all axis this is something that you have to keep practicing and make sure you get this down perfectly before you move on to anything else now, the next thing a lot of people are doing is they're dying in mid-range duels, and there are multiple reasons for this. The first reason is you are crouching and spraying on kills that are not easily convertible. If the enemy is super weak, I wouldn't blame you for crouching and spraying, or if you killed the first enemy and you're fighting a second one, you don't have time to reset your aim, then crouching and spraying is perfectly fine. But if you are using half your mag and your crouch spraying, to kill a single person, then you are not using one tabs correctly, you're not bursting correctly, you don't have good cross replacement, and it is just not a fast enough time to kill to get you to any rank past like gold, to be honest. This is a very common rank I see in some of the lower ranks with players that are just crouch spraying on a lot of kills, and it really creates these scenarios where you are shooting someone in the back, or you're taking the first shot on an enemy when they don't even know you're there, and that enemy is able to not only identify where they're getting shot from, but win the matchup, which should never happen. That means that you won on all axis. You won on the positioning battle. You maybe made a play in the game sense battle that was correct, and you were in the correct location doing the correct thing but you still lost because your mechanics just couldn't keep up now the next big reason you're losing these mid to long range duels is that you are not spray controlling your gun while standing a lot of times people will crouch to control the spray which is fine but you can control your recoil a lot just standing up by just pulling down your gun but it's definitely something that you got to practice and get the hang of but once you do you can control your recoil fairly accurately at least up to like four or five shots even from the longer ranges away and one of the best things that i would suggest is practicing first on drones and training those little drones that fly around it's nice because they don't die with one shot you have to hit multiple shots in a row so you can kind of get a hang of actually controlling that spray when you're standing and then also practicing double headshotting training bots with armor with the phantom because it's not going to want you to headshot them and then of course free for all but we'll talk about that later now the reason that this is so good is being able to control your recoil as much as possible while you're standing will give you even additional recoil on top of that after you crouch so you have a large amount of time to get a kill very quickly First, you have a chance to get the kill right off the bat with the tap or the burst. Then, you have an extended period of time with controlling it while you're standing. And then finally, you have a, an extended period of time where you're semi-accurate while you're crouching. But then after that, you're just going to be completely inaccurate. But you should have already got the kill if you went through all three of those phases. Now, the next big reason that you are basically missing a lot of your shots, losing a lot of your gunfights, and your gunplay is just not performing to the level that you need it to be, is that you are rushing your shots. And one of the biggest reasons that this is happening is that you are crumbling under pressure. When you're playing in training bots, or sometimes even when you're playing in free-for-all, you're aiming just fine. But when you're in a ranked game, you're completely crumbling under pressure, and it's actually creating you to miss. Now, this is a really easy thing to spot. A lot of times, this happens to players that are like whiffing easy op shots when they realistically have a lot more time to hit it than they think and they're dying because they miss not because they didn't fire fast enough another example of this is not taking your time to reset your aim after you failed a one tap or burst when you have the time to do so and another example of this is panicking so instead of standing your ground and trying to hit a shot, you try to split the difference where you like fire, but half run away, and you're just never going to be accurate doing that at all. Now, unfortunately, there isn't one stop all fix to get numb to pressure, but what will show you that you have a lot more time than you think is just running around in deathmatch with your knife out or maybe a pistol or whatever weapon and not shooting anyone. I want you to really take note of how long it takes some people to kill you even when you are not instantly killing them back. And 
And a lot of times when you are shooting or when you are aiming and missing or when you are spraying and crouching, these are the specific scenarios where you become a lot easier to shoot back. So when you do this, you're going to realize how much more time that you have to hit your shots than you think you have. And it's going to take a lot of that pressure off your shoulders and allow you to take your time so that you don't rush your shots every single time and just whiff over and over. Now, the last thing that we got to talk about is aim outside of Valorant specific gunplay. We're talking about all the stuff that has to do with inside Valorant, but what about the raw fundamentals? You know, things like flicking and micro tracking. Well, these things are only matter in conjunction with the other things that I talked about. And this is one of the big problems with people trying to improve their aim. They think that they can only work on flicking and micro tracking in things like aim trainers, and they never really master the other stuff. And it's just not going to convert unless you combine them together. Together because extremely good aimers in other games can be absolutely trash at Valorant if they don't learn all the things that I talked about before. You could be an amazing aimer in something like Overwatch, for instance, where there's no recoil control on a character like Widow. You could move like a madman and still be perfectly accurate and be in the air, but that is never going to translate to Valorant. And unless you learn the layers of how to play Valorant correctly on top of that, you will still be trash even if you were an amazing aimer before. And this is really important for you to understand. I'm not saying that practicing the other stuff is completely worthless. I'm saying that you need both in conjunction and one without the other is just not enough. Now, after you mastered all these things, you went through each of these things one at a time and you made sure that your aim is on point. Now you will confidently be able to not only improve upon the aim fundamentals that you already know, but you will learn from your own failures in decision making and positioning at a much faster rate, which will just allow you to improve as a player in other regards besides your aim as well. And this is the actual true way to start on your climb to becoming better at Valorant. And if you do not do this specific thing, nothing else I possibly could teach you would ever help you improve. So that's why I really need to make a big point in stressing this here. But I really hope you take it to heart because the running and gunning nerf is going to be just around the corner. And if you do not learn this stuff now, you might even derank multiple ranks instead of climb because you're crutching on the forgivable, a bet fleeting gunplay that already exists in the game. But go to the gameplay website in the links down below for everything you possibly possibly need to improve at Valor. We have in-depth mechanical courses, aim tips, agent guides. We got everything you possibly need on the Game Leap website, so go check it out in the links down below. But thank you so much for coming by. I hope you enjoyed the video. Follow me at CoachMillsOW on Twitter, and I'll see you tomorrow.